Hey everybody, it's Gordon. Welcome to the bench. If you followed along on my channel and you followed me even a little bit, you'll know that I have some very basic techniques that I use and I've shared those with you. I have some intermediate techniques that I've shared those with you and I have a couple advanced level techniques that maybe you haven't seen. I'll be honest with you, I know you haven't seen them. So I'm gonna share those with you today too with the disclaimer. If you haven't done any tote repair at all and you've never tried to fix a broken handle on a hand plane, don't start here. Go back and watch one of the other videos and you'll, you'll up your skill and hopefully you'll advance and you'll get to the level we are today. And if you are experienced and you've done this before, watch this. I've got something new for you. Stick around. You'll see why. Okay, so this is a Stanley number two. It's a Brazilian rosewood tote. And regardless of the repair, whether it's a horn or a brake or a foot, whatever we're doing, we have to do three things. And that is one, plan, and think it all the way through and decide what the end objective is, what's our goal. Two, we need to prepare. And that is a dry fit, a work holding device. And then three, we need to prep the surface and choose our epoxy. So. Maybe there's four things in there, but those are the steps that I have to take every single time. And it's always best to do all of those steps before we do any glue and before we put anything wet together. So plan, our plan with this is it's the Stanley number two. So I'm trusting that it's probably not gonna be a user. And if we we're doing user quality stuff, we'd be going for durability and, and we can be a little less particular about some things. And maybe we can be more creative with our colors and species and that type of thing but this is a restoration project. So it's a Stanley II, so I know what the plan is. The plan is to make the break go away, make this look like it did when it was new. That's what we're gonna do. Two, preparation. This is a mid-body, so it's broken in the middle, and in part of my preparation, I discovered, and we already posted a video about this earlier, this rod was all jacked up. So part of the preparation was straighten the rod, make sure that we're happy with the way this goes together. So that's done, check. Second would be work holding. And you can see what I did. I just cut out a little piece because we know from, again, experience and simple physics, if we're going to clamp anything and apply any sort of pressure, we wanna be perpendicular to the break. We can't put a rod in here and just torque it down. We can't use the plane itself because it will shift. Your, your clamping pressure that's being applied is at a, angle it's a skew and that's not going to work when we have epoxy all over the surface it's going to want to slide and then it's out of place so i want to apply very specific pressure and i want to be perpendicular to the brake so we've made a block we'll probably hot mount glue that in place i've already put one of my favorite bessie clamps on this just to test it and we've done our work holding so i know what the plan is to clamp this guy and hold it and um now we're on to the next one and that is prep. So we're gonna prep the surface and then we're gonna apply a tinted epoxy from system three and we're gonna put it together and leave it for 72-ish hours or something like that, maybe a day or two. So prep the surface, what are we gonna do? Well, the rod can go away now, we can take care of that. I'm gonna set him aside. This brake is super clean, however, let me move into frame. This brake is super clean, but I want it to basically go away. And what I have learned, because we're using epoxy, we don't necessarily need clamp pressure like you do with you know, PVAs or other types of glues, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a little scorp tool and I'm going to basically peel away any oxidation or any surface that was here I call it my avocado technique, but what I wanna do is leave this margin. Don't come anywhere near this outside perimeter where my two um, edges join, right? And what we're gonna do is kinda of hollow the two surfaces um, just a little bit to create what might be like a clam shell, right? If you think about how a clam, when it closes, the clam is inside, but the outside perimeter, I know, it's gross, right? The outside perimeter uh, is where all the pressure is. So that's what I'm trying to create.
Okay, so we're moving on with number two. One of the things I like to do, of course, is save my puddle. And what that does is tells us that our epoxy's cure. Whoops. If you want to pop it out of there and try and bend it or crack it, you can do that. I've cut them with scissors and checked it. Um, but rule of thumb is what's happening in the cup is what's happening in your tote. So I know that we're cured. I know we're good. We're going to take our work holding off. And now we have some options for this guy. So here's our number two. I did something that I've been practicing with. And I'm calling it semi-cured um, squeeze out <laughs> removal. But I put this together. You saw the prep. I make the little clamshell. I very lightly hollowed out both sides. So I get a super tight um, seam. Then I filled the center. There's a dowel in here with a wax paper coating. And so that will come out. I can push it right out. So that creates a kind of a hydraulic effect. The, the epoxy is pressed in. I kind of work it into both surfaces. It's put on a little bit heavy. I put it together. It's on its guide pin. Squeeze it. And I know that I have, you know, really good distribution because I get squeezed out all the way around. If I don't get squeezed out in the area, I'll pull it back apart, put more epoxy on it, and squeeze it again. So we had squeeze out all the way around. I waited about four hours. And it was dry to the point where it's um, pliable, but it's not sticky, right? It's cured, and I call it semi-cured. And I'm leaving it under pressure so it's got its clamp and it's held in place. And then very lightly, I went in with a small chisel, got underneath, and, uh, and just peeled it off all the way around. So what that gives me is this. Essentially, we've lost the lacquer. We've got a really nice joint all the way around. So we have two choices. We could either use acetone and I take the lacquer off uh, or I use lacquer and fill it back in without, uh, because we have a slight void there where there's no uh, lacquer, no finish. I can put a river with a small artist brush. I go back in and I put the lacquer back in, try and fill the void and then feather it out that way. So I really never touch or remove the original finish on the majority of this guy. And that's what we're going to try on this one. This is a really good candidate. I love my joint. Super tight right there. So let's go ahead and paint it and see what happens. Okay, we're at our next step. And so after our epoxy was dried and uh, you saw me peel off my, my squeeze out as it was semi-cured, I love that new process because it lifted just part of the, um, the original finish. And we're doing two totes at the same time. These are both for the same person. Um, and we're featuring one and I'm doing the other one kind of on the side. So I'll share both of those with you at this point, but where are we? So I used uh nitrocellulose lacquer and I brushed it in and kind of let it flow. And I filled in where my finish had been removed. And then after I light lightly touched it with some automotive grade wet dry, and that's like a five micron paper. Um, just to kind of burnish it in and make sure that we didn't upset the original finish. I went back and uh, applied a paste wax, which I do with all of my totes. And I just love a satin, a little more tactile feel. Um, again, I doubt these are users, but it's the same finish for me always on everything I do. So both of them got uh, their fill in, both got their paste wax. And it's still matte finish right now because that paste wax... As you've seen me also do in an earlier video, I put it on and leave it. I, I don't just put it on, wipe it off. I like to apply it and let it harden. And then I go back with a cotton um, cloth like this and kind of give it a light buff. So I'm giving it some pressure. And uh, basically it's just like, I'm not going to say car wax, but it's just like any paste wax. Put it on, let it dry and then take it back off. And if it's too shiny for you, uh, you get a little too much gloss, then you can go back with your 4 aught um, steel wool and uh, touch it up. You can knock down some of the sheen and reapply if you want. Put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. Doesn't matter, right? You're just building up a nice protective finish and here we go. This is, so I can catch that in the light, a little smudgy. 
This is our number two original finish, overcoated with wax, no files, no sandpaper, almost gone. I see a little bit on the heel. And again, I know what I'm looking for. You know what we're looking for because you watched this entire process. We got just a little bitty tiny line right there. But I love the way we came out for a no files, no sandpaper finish. Beautiful. Let's see what the other one looks like. There he is with his wax. Original dings and dents. Got a nice texture to it. 